So, Rich, you were on our podcast recently where we spoke about the importance of getting a heat loss calculation done correctly. Today, we're going to be talking about how to do a heat loss calculation properly from a homeowner's perspective. Yeah. So, on that podcast, you mentioned a couple of different ways about doing heat loss calcs. Do you want to just walk us through some of those? So one is uh, quite traditional is using a tape measure, which I highly, uh, you don't recommend, well, I highly recommend you don't use. Um, and the other one is using a laser measuring tool. Um, you can get ones that uh, have a Bluetooth ability as well, so they can Bluetooth to, the, to an app as well. The latest and greatest tool to use at the moment is using uh, LiDAR. And um, this is a special little lens in the um, pro models of iPhones and iPads. So um, it's not out in, in Android devices just yet, but that this particular tool allows you to capture the dimensions pretty quickly. A lot, in fact, a lot quicker than, than a traditional kind of laser tool. Um, so yeah, starting out doing a room by room heat loss calculation, first port of call is like, okay, which tool am I gonna use to capture the dimensions for each individual rooms? The windows, the doors, the floors, out floor areas. Um, and it creates a 3D image, as you saw, mm -hmm. of each room, and they stitch all the rooms together. And then we can use those dimensions to extract into the software for our room by room heat loss calculation. And then obviously, then we move on to the building materials as well. Mm -hmm. So, building materials are really important because it gives us a, a U value. And that U value is a, is a number that essentially gives us how much thermal energy um, can be dissipated through that wall or lost it at all, I should say. Having a buildup of each independent building material, whether it's an external wall, a window, a floor, a ceiling, is critical to obtain that information. The most interesting thing is that when you had the light on, uh, we actually scanned the rooms out. Uh, so basically that captures the room dimensions for you. It captures windows. I saw it does all of those kind of things for you. That then is just one element of that. So you're basically, you're from Heat Engineer. So you've got the software that basically takes that and interprets that into a heat loss calc, right? Correct, yeah, that's it. Once you scanned each room independently, and we can look at it, it actually converts into a 2D image as well as a 3D image, but we can just confirm that we're happy with the general layout, mm. with the window placements, with the, the radiators, if there are radiators in there as well. Because it's all cloud-based, it's, it's instantaneously uploaded to the cloud, which we can access it from our heat engineer dashboard. Okay. Um, so that's that's, that's the, certainly the first phase from transferring the dimension directly into the software. Um, and then, like I said before, then we can just review the building materials um, and then even start sizing, the, making sure, see if the radiators are accurately sized as well. That's as in the current radiators. So we can see if the current radiators are adequate for a given flow temperature, with a certain delta T, so typically five degrees mm -hmm. delta T on a heat pump. If the current radiators are acceptable for that, that's great. The box turns green um, and then of course you've got um, the instance where the heat the, the radiator sorry they don't meet the, the demand yeah. so that turns red you know so you've got to modify that radiator um, uh, in the sense of just trying to maybe check swapping out from a k1 to a k2 it's about kind of like seeing where we can make some slight tweaks and changes to work with the existing um, building um, with the existing radiators. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this, that's part of that kind of journey from the design. And from the homeowner's perspective, I think the one thing that kind of took me a bit by surprise is that you asked me a lot of questions. It's like, you know, what's in this wall? What's in the ceiling? So the more information that you have as a homeowner that you can impart onto the person that's actually doing the heat loss calc is hugely beneficial to getting something that's far more accurate. Sometimes you make the assumption that a homeowner hasn't got a clue what the insulation is. I mean, they might not even know what insulation is, period. But it's, it's so important to ask that, that, yeah. those questions. It might seem so obvious. Trying to get as close as possible to the results um, for the output to being correct, you need to make sure the inputs are, are, mm. are, are correct in the first place, right? It's like any kind of software. Not only have you got any insulation in your loft, but what is the thickness yeah. in your loft yeah. as well? Um, and actually, what kind of quality is it? Tom might say, oh, it's 200 mil of, uh, of, of wool in there. But actually, you kind of go in there and it's like kind of this wool that's like 40, 50 years old and it's scraggly and it's all over the place and it's, it's, it's not even, you know, and there's, there's patches missing. So making the assumption that oh, it's, oh, it's 200 mil of insulation wool and it's just nice and level and flat. Who don't make those assumptions you know if you can pop your head up into the into the loft into the attic have a look see what kind of quality it is and i do understand that some homeowners won't have a clue um but you've got to ask so you did the lidar uh the, our downstairs was okay because we've got a lot of flat ceilings 
it's when we got to the areas of the vaulted ceilings that there were kind of potential issues. So you've got the software that basically you can then input all of that information. Now you've got that software, but if you have got an installer or somebody that is coming to do a survey and you have got vaulted ceilings and they're just doing the kind of spreadsheets approach, yeah. how does that work? <laughs> so yeah, you're right to um, ask that question. The LiDAR is it's fantastic on traditional buildings with like square flat ceilings. Mm. And, and roofs although it will scan and it will create the 3d image with the vaulted ceiling sections and it looks like it is, it's doing a cracking job of it in reality it's difficult for the um the software to actually extract those dimensions so you've got to have lots of kind of customization on on that which is something obviously to explore definitely the way we're currently doing it is that you can modify those vaulted ceilings so yes you get a nice 3d and 2d image of the of the of those of that first floor in heat engineer software what we've got now is we can well say we've got now we've had it for many years now for we've got eight different profiles of vaulted ceilings and you can modify that so i can see like a bedroom's got a vaulted section and yes we've got a, um, the lidar scan 3d model mm. of that but the dimensions aren't particularly well suited to that so we can go into heat engineer and actually say oh, okay it's this type of vaulted ce ceiling let's let's just change the inputs here slightly and so we can be closer to the truth on those particular structures again somebody has got some a surveyor coming to do a heat loss calculation for them and they're not using any kind of software and they are just pacing the rooms out and not really measuring windows properly and just kind of making a lot of guesstimates is that a red flag um it certainly is a red flag if the next day or in a couple of days time they give you a full on um, uh, final quote or proposal. In order to submit a final proposal, you want a room by room heat loss calculation so you can be confident that this is definitely the heat pump that you want fitted. I wouldn't necessarily, it's a red flag if someone wants to give you like an idea, like mm -hmm. an, an initial quote. So for an initial quote, by all means, just, you know, pace out the, 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 the floor and um, get an idea of the size of the building. I think that's fine. Definitely do not um, commit to a uh, heat pump installation based upon someone just pacing it out. Um, yeah, that's definitely that's definitely a red flag in so, that instance. So should homeowners then be demanding some sort of drawing from that installer to actually see that they have physically measured the dimensions of the rooms, measured kind of depths of walls, the, the size of windows, you know, all, all these kind of things where heat can potentially escape through? Yeah. Should you be demanding that? So if somebody has even, you know, maybe taken the tape measure out, but not measured the windows, for example, yeah. and then submitted a formal proposal, would that be a red flag? No. Do you know what? Um, so an engineering drawing isn't a must, actually. Mm. Um, what is really a must is having a look at what the inputs are. So having, once they've done a room by room calc and they haven't necessarily been going around sketching on a piece of paper or using the LIDAR, you can almost see that they're not, you know, they're not drawing. They're just they're just writing down dimensions, whether it is in some piece of software or it's in an Excel spreadsheet. The dimensions they're inputting for each room, that's what's important. That's what you prob That's what you want to ask for, not necessarily for an engineering drawing, because actually a heating engineer plumber that is, is likely to come and fit and install and commission a heat pump, you don't need a, an engineering drawing. You don't need a schematic. Yeah. You don't need a floor plan. However, it's much better if you do have one. Yeah. You know, it's nice to have that, but it's not a necessity. You can quite easily fit an outstanding heat pump that that has an amazing efficiency, get it designed and fit it and get it commissioned without having a, a floor plan. It's not needed. It's mm -hmm. I'd say it's it's definitely a nice to have. It's not a red flag though. So that heat loss calculation, again, going back to this kind of uh installer that we've just invented does he then also have to measure the rads that are in that each respective room to be able to figure out whether they will actually be able to deliver the amount of heat that they should do given the heat pump size that they do and the flow temperatures that he's designing to and if those rads are too small should he then be advising that homeowner to get them upsized years and years ago when before when i was doing lots of uh, consulting uh there were quite a few times that i said okay when i'm going to measure your radiators as well and they're like oh don't worry i'm i'm, I'm changing them they're like okay well you can use my report so you'd be confident in knowing what radiators they want because they maybe they want some designer radiators mm -hmm. so in certain cases if you know you want to you know get rid of your, your radiators and have some new design ones mm -hmm. or whatever then you don't need to measure them right because the report will tell you in most cases that you want to make sure the heating engineer engineer surveyor has actually 
uh, measure the existing radiators because then they can within within the software it'll actually tell you what the output of that radiator is at a given flow temperature and delta t and obviously when i talk about delta t it's the reflection of the return temp the return temperature so what is the benefit of an installer that uses an excel spreadsheet versus an installer that actually uses heat engineer software reducing human error I think it's a big, big uh, factor there. We're quite proud of, we've got various steps where we are highlighting if someone's got a maximum or minimum number, you know, are you, you know, checking those numbers, are you happy with it? If you've got any building materials missing for a particular number. So if someone enters in oh, an external length of 5.3 meters, whatever, in Excel, it won't actually ask you, oh, you're missing a material here. Well, then in our software, it'll actually say, by the way, you need to state a material here because you have a dimension exists. That's just a couple of examples. So we've got lots right. of other kind of key color indicators to, to remind them that actually, oh, actually I'm missing out this information. Um, and we've got various sort of like due diligence tech checks in there as well. So we've got a quality assurance check on certain uh, other in, important information. Even just simply down as like, have you got the postcode correct? Because that comes down to the external design temperature, mm -hmm. the highest U value used as well, you know, has that been entered in error? You know, mm. once you've got a couple of inputs, you can just automate so many other kind of outputs. So what are Rich's top tips to somebody, to Herb Miller that's watching this video, they're getting, or they're planning to get a heat loss calculation done. What are your top tips to them to actually keep tabs on the surveyor to make sure that they get the most accurate heat loss calculation possible? If you can put together relevant information about building materials. Mm. So you know anything about the wall construction, if you know anything about your loft, how much insulation, the thickness of it, take photographs as well. I'd also, once they've actually submitted the uh, potential proposal to you and they've done a room by room heat loss count, you know, don't be shy to ask them for the inputs. As in like simple like room dimensions, room heights, window areas, having description of the building materials that's being used. Cause you can just sort of double check that, you know. So you only primarily work with professionals. Uh, if there's a homeowner that's actually watching this and they want to maybe get a sanity check or they want to just double check something, can they contact uh, Heath Engineer? Yeah, that? they can. Actually, we do have, um, you see on a web, if you go to our website, you'll see that you can actually conduct a free survey. I should say that, you know, just because you've used the, the survey and you've gone through and you've played around the software, it's still, I highly, highly recommend for, to get a professional heating engineer plumber that's familiar with those processes to, to actually do it for you but there's nothing stopping you having to play around with it anyway getting a final proposal from a, for a heat pump installation please 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 get a, a professional heating engineer who's aware of room or room heat lights calculations to use the software instead of yourselves um, because obviously they're trained to do it essentially you know well rich thank you so much for your time today thank you it's been a real eye-opening exercise i'm really curious to see what our heat loss is for our property this will be a separate video that we'll actually be covering but you know thank you so much for your time today thank you if you enjoyed this video please give us a thumbs up hit the subscribe button below and we'll see you in our next video thanks again rich cheers thanks, cheers, bye. thanks.